Confession number one. I confess my prayer life prior to this year was subpar. But praise God for focus prayer time to raise the bar this year. I'm serious. In 2019, my prayer life was one of these. Someone comes up to me or on Facebook or whatever and say, hey, would you pray for me? Yeah, I'd, I'd pause and pray for like 30 seconds and like check, prayed for, God, it's up to you. Now, that works. What I would call it, and if you've been with Catalyst Church for a while, that would be called, that's kind of like a microwavable prayer. In other words, you open up the, your heart and you throw in a prayer and you're like, 20 seconds, because you can't be any longer than that, or you get a little bit intimate with God. Microwavable prayers, I excelled at. I excelled at that in 2019. You contacted me. I prayed for you for a few seconds. But in 2020, when this pandemic hit, I fell deeper in love with you, church. I could not come to the rescue and visit you in hospitals. I could not come to your house and give you a big hug and say it's okay. I could not come to our teenagers and slap them upside the head and say stop it. I still do, yeah. I couldn't do that. And so I'm like, the Holy Spirit's like, you can do something. I'm like, what, what is it? What program should I start? And the Holy Spirit's like, pray. And I'm like, I do pray. He's like, David, for reals? He didn't say for reals. That's me interpreting what he said. For reals, pray. And I started to what I call oven bake prayers. We're literally, when our prayer times that we have, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and so on and so forth, we had an opportunity to throw it in the oven and really bake the prayers. And some of the prayers have been the same prayers over and over again. And praise God that we get to oven bake prayers because at that moment we get to go and be like Jesus who in many times went away and prayed. He did his quick healings, but he went away and prayed. And I'm letting you know, I'm, just, I'm not saying, yep, I got my prayer life taken care of. Nope. I've got a long way to go, but thanks be to God for 2020, where my prayer life for you and for others went from subpar to par, but better. And isn't that kind of our goal as Christ followers, to take it one step at a time? Now, you probably expected the pastor to say, well, your prayer life was so great that if you pulled up your pants, which I'm not going to, you'd have calluses on your knees because you prayed all the time. The answer to that is, yes, I should, but I am not. I need to be on my knees more. And so do you. Because this is what Jesus modeled at the very worst time in his life. In Luke chapter 22, he knew he was about to go to the cross. He knew that he was about to suffer and die an excruciating death for your sins and my sins. Even though he was fully God, he was fully man, and he felt everything. And this is what he says. And he came out and went as his custom. In other words, he regularly went to oven bake prayers. And this is what he says. He went to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, watch. What did he say to them? He said, pray. He said, what? He said, what? Pray that you may not enter into what? And would you agree in 2020, there was a lot of temptations to do stupid things and to say stupid things and to believe stupid things? And so. And he withdrew with them with a stone throw away. So from here to, let's just say, the back of the worship center. And he knelt down And he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. But then he pauses and he says, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And there appeared an angel in heaven, from heaven, strengthening him. and And being in agony, he what? Prayed more 
earnestly. So he already had the custom of praying. He encouraged his disciples to pray. He even knew the Father, and he prayed to him, but even more earnestly, and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus, God Almighty, prayed even more earnestly, we've got a lot of more earnest prayers to pray in this year so that we don't fall into temptation. And, okay, and then, so drops of blood, and then, and when he rose from his what? Prayer. He came to his disciples, followers of him. He came to them, and I just, I mean, don't look at the screen, but watch this. You can almost see it right now. They were in this kumbaya huddle, and they were all holding hands, and Jesus told us to pray, so we're lifting up our holy hands, and on their callous knees, Jesus walked into the midst of this circle, and he's like, well done, good and faithful servants. I'm about to go to the cross. Keep praying for me. Is that what happened? No. (laughs) The disciples were just like you and just like me. And when he rose from his prayer, he came to the disciples and found them what? I believe, starting in March of this year, Jesus Christ has found his church sleeping. Which results in we have fallen to temptation of believing politics, believing our feelings, believing all this mess that is is hounding upon us. 2020 has been tough. And ladies and gentlemen, my challenge to each and every one of us, including myself, is let's not be found what? Sleeping. Because Jesus is coming back, and we're going to be talking about that next week. Jesus is coming back sooner than he was yesterday. So are you awake? And we clearly see this. He's like, you were sleeping. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Church of Jesus Christ, why are we sleeping when we should be what? Pray. And not these microwavable prayers, which is good, keep it up. But one of these oven break, intentional time of prayer. Stop Facebook. Stop Netflix. Stop Hulu. Stop. There's like a hundred of them. All right, but stop that and pray that you may not enter into what? Temptation. Church of Jesus Christ, I have failed you before, and I'm not going to fail you again. I do not want to lead by example by sleeping when it comes to prayer. Keep me accountable as I keep you accountable. So here's my challenge with this for me and for us. Wake up, get up, pray, not for your will to be done, but for whose? Let me just read that. Wake up, get up, and pray. For God's will to be done, not whose? It's really not that difficult. 